All right, welcome. We'll wait a couple more moments. I think we've still got a couple of people coming on now. Fine. Welcome everybody who is uh, has just joined the call. Yeah. Um, as a as a little introduction um, to us for anybody that is new to the channel, uh, my name is Joel, and we've got Alex as well. It's our um, between us uh, we run the channel, um, and obviously just to put a little bit of a face to a name um, through some of the messages that we've spoken with you up to now. So uh, welcome aboard. If of course you need anything throughout, um, always just simply get in contact uh, with us throughout your membership with us, I mean. Um, on today's call, um, we're going to be doing a little bit of a, a chart breakdown. We're going to be covering Forex, stocks, crypto, the whole financial market. Going to be having a look at an overview of that and where we can see certain um, currencies, stocks and cryptos moving over the next month. Um, if at any stage you've got any questions on anything that we cover, and anything uh, that maybe you want to ask a question on potentially unrelated to what we're um, talking about and that you potentially want to ask in regards to trading in general, then just please use the chat feature that is on Zoom. So uh, that's enabled. Simply get your messages in there and we're able to, to check those and answer your question then at a convenient time. And um, and we'll go from there, really. Um, Alex, do you have a, a little bit of an introduction as well? Yeah, great stuff. Yeah, good to have you all. Um, hello, Lubs, Damien, Christine and Al. Um, I'm sure there'll be a couple more pop on shortly. Hello, Nailesh. Um, one thing I would just like to add is if there is anything you, um, any questions that you might have, as Joel's just alluded to, um let us know just in answer to your question, Lubs. Um, we are going to be recording this session. Um, so any questions that you might have, or if you do want to view this at a later date, um, it will be uploaded onto the onto the trading group uh, Telegram page. Um, so you can watch it at, at your convenience. That's not a problem at all. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, but thanks um, for coming on. Yeah, one thing I would like to add, just so we can kind of, tailor this call and get to know you guys a little bit better if in the chat you could let us know um where you're listening from and what your preferences are what do you like to trade what do you like to do we're talking stocks we're talking crypto we're talking um what's the other one forex so get it in the chat let us know um really good to meet you guys we're going to be running this on a monthly basis on the last day of each month and what this is for is this is more of a, a laid back feel, more of a relaxed feel to our weekly Zoom call. So for um, Trading Club 101 members, we do this every single Sunday um, at 8 p.m. where we do um, weekly chart breakdowns. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be talking about sectors. We're going to be talking about May as a month ahead and what we expect to happen there. Um, so as I said, let us know where you're calling from, what you're into. And if you have any questions at any stage, um, we'll, we'll come to your question. So every question will be asked, answered, sorry. Um, Christine, you're not hearing you. I'm not hearing you. So it should Can everyone be, else hear us? It should be okay. Um, just make sure that you've got audio turned on. I mean, as I say, I... Uh, let's make sure is everybody else hearing us correctly and, and everything is um, coming through well. Brilliant. Okay. So, um, yeah, Chrissy, maybe just have a look at the um, volume controls and just check that everything on the, uh, on the audio settings are, are working well. Sometimes if you're listening on a phone or something like that, you could have it connected to a different device, all sorts of things like that I've done in the past. Um, so just uh, just double check those things if it is all working. Um, and as I say, um, don't panic if, if you're having a couple of technical issues because uh, this session will be recorded and we will um, be posting it out again for, for everybody on the uh, on the on the um, on the channel so you're able to, to see it as well. okay? So um, we've got a couple of people now just joined. Um, what we'll do is we'll start going through some of the markets um, and have a look at what we are viewing now. We'll start off with the uh, Forex and the currency markets. 
Um, so let's just, just get, make sure that's all been set up correctly. You have to bear with me a moment, guys. Thank you to Kashaya. Thank you for joining us. Um, this session will be recorded. And as I said to any of you who have joined us on the call today, um, we do do this weekly. Um, so if it's something that you enjoy, please support the channel. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk later about how you can get involved and get more of this on a weekly basis. But what we'll do is we'll pass over to Joel. We're going to start by looking through some, some currency indexes. And then later on in the call, we're going to go into some sectors. And as we said earlier, the chat feature is enabled. If at any stage you have any questions whatsoever, get them into the chat feature. And what we'll do is we'll answer each and every question that you may have. Okay, guys. So thanks for that, Alex. Uh, we're going to start off with the most important currency uh, in the financial markets. It really does dominate everything else um, from currencies in the forex market but also the stock market and it has a huge influence as well of course on the crypto market as well and that's the us dollar now for anybody that is fairly new to trading um, something you may not be aware of is that usually you'll have a look at forex charts and you'll see things such as such as this on the usd jpy chart um, you'll see USD CAD, Euro USD charts, all of these types of things that you'll uh, that you'll see. But you may not be aware that you can actually have a look at the currencies in particular on their own. So for Euro USD, of course, um, the breakdown of that currency is both the euro and the dollar together. Okay. Now what you can do, as I say, is look at those currencies individually to see the the relative strength of each currency itself. That then can help you to make some really, really good trades and narrow down on what exact market that you should be trading. So as an idea, well, what we're gonna to look to today is look through each individual currency on its own, and then we'll start putting together a couple of ideas that you could then potentially trade off the back of that. And hopefully by looking at it in this way, that maybe is a slightly different way to approaching some analysis, you'll actually get an insight to uh, some of the ways that we look to break down our charts and look to do some of our analysis for our premium members, of course, as well. So um, we'll start off with the US dollar currency index. Um, you can find that on TradingView by just simply typing in the, the corner there, DXY chart. And that's what will come up. So um, we'll look at this initially on the daily chart. Um, and what you can see, well, actually, let's start off on the higher time frame. So let's have a look on the weekly chart here, OK? Quite honestly, for now, the past recent history, going back five, six uh, years, um, dollar itself has been constrained within this range, OK? Oh, we've got uh, somebody joining us still, so that's no problem. So it's been constrained within this uh, range between somewhere around about 90 all the way up to 100, 101 region, okay? So if I just move them up slightly just to where it should be, roughly around about 90, and this has been somewhere around about 100, 101, okay? So it's in this region over the past um, five, six years that the dollar has been... Um, moving between, okay? Um, throughout that period, there's been lots and lots of different economic, uh, macroeconomic uh, changes, uh, market crashes, all sorts of things have happened, but the dollar has stayed within this range, okay? And every single time it moves up to the top of it or the bottom of it, it generally looks to bounce away from them, okay? So when we're looking on the weekly channels here, that's our initial basis that we're considering could well happen. Um, may not necessarily happen, but that is what's happened previously. It gives us a bias and some sort of framework to start working with, okay? Now, when we look a little bit more recent history, if we go back into the daily chart, and we've already got those weekly levels um, already marked on there, you'll actually see how on the daily chart, it is reacting really, really well to these levels, okay? So back in early um, or late, uh, early March, late February, 
um, had a really good bounce directly off that 90 level. And that $90 um, dollar level there on the DXY has been a good psychological support. It's held that support and it's broken off quite significantly, bouncing all the way up to 93 before it's now looked to come back down. But today, we've actually seen a huge reaction on the daily chart, as you can see here. After having quite a long sell-off, probably for the, throughout um, April, really, um, almost all of April, the dollar has been selling off. But on, its, on the last day of April, it's actually now massively um, shot up. So you'll see that in lots and lots of um, the markets today. Something that we were anticipating this morning potentially would happen. Lots and lots of people are uh, positioned short on the dollar. Um, and now on the last day of the month and last day of the week, and also um, last day of the quarter month end flows that have been uh, running as well, that you've got this huge um, push off. Okay. So something that we uh, we brought up actually this morning, um, anybody who was in the channel will have seen um, who's ready for the dollar to break all of that open running trades. And that's what we mean, because the whole market has been anticipating this dollar to continue selling off. However, there's a very strong possibility this morning that the, um, the month end flows, the weekend money flows, we're going to look to try and potentially take profits from any of these moves that have been happening and the dollar moving down or just simply positioning themselves for the next month ahead. So you can see lots and lots of buying of the dollar has happened at this stage. Okay, something to consider and actually something that we are um, forecasting potentially can happen over the next month that this could well be um, a sign of the trend changing. That's not to mean that it's never going to come back down from this level and it's just going to go up in a straight line. Of course not. Markets don't move in straight lines. But this does give you an indication, especially with the timing of this dollar buying in com contrast to all of the previous selling that's happened, that there's a sign that you could see now a trend change in the dollar and the dollar looking to gain some strength. So that's what we're looking at for the dollar. And we could see a potential that this trend continues over May. Be watching out for that if you are uh, looking to take any trades yourself and know how to position yourself against this risk, okay? Now, we'll move over to the pound. Um, and anybody that is looking to uh, see this chart on their own charts is just to look at the British um, currency index, and that's BXY, okay, on trading view. So now, very interesting for the, for the pound is that we um, are forecasting that this also has seen a little bit of a trend change, okay? Now, fundamentally, there has been some changes to the pound and some potential risks coming up, a big, big event happening next week. So, um, <clears throat> if anybody has their um, speaker on, just please do remember to mute it as well. It just helps the, uh, the audio for everybody. So um, where was on the, on the British pound index, there is a huge event happening next week. And that is where we've got a, um, a Bank of England interest rate decision, interest rate meeting, um, where they will look to give some guidance, forward guidance for the market about where they see the economic um, future over the short medium term for the pound and for the uk economy as uh, as an overall um now typically over the kind of going back to i, I guess the major event through the covid financial crisis that uh, crisis that happened over the past kind of 12 months every single um central bank has been making their economic policy extremely loose. What that means is that their interest rates have been really low. They've offered loads and loads of stimulus to the economy to try and make sure that everybody and businesses are able to stay afloat. Um, I'm sure that everybody here will be aware of that. I don't need to be telling you anything about that that's happened over the last 12 months, of course. But 
what um, this does mean is that at some point, central banks will start to change that policy. What they're going to start doing is they're going to be starting to uh, tighten their monetary policy. That's what it will be called in financial terms, is they're tightening monetary policy. That will mean that potentially they stop to, they're stopping some of the stimulus. They'll be stopping some of the um, economic support for businesses. They'll look to stop overall government spending, basically, and they'll start to reduce that. Now, um, what that then means for the currency in general is if the um, currency monetary policy is tightening, then that simply means that the economic outlook for that country will be improving, typically, which I think um, most people can see it will be doing for most Western countries at the moment. And across the globe, as we start to see uh, the markets reopen and the economies reopening as lockdowns start to ease and, and start to come to an end. If, that, if the markets and if the Bank of England do give some indications next week that that is their policy and that is what they're looking to do over the summer, then we'll start to see the pound gain a lot of strength. Okay, And that will be a trend change to what we have see, previously seen. And that is what we've seen up to now. Okay, You can see that market structure itself has changed significantly. Going back to April 2018, the pound has been selling off and there's been general weakness in the pound due to Brexit and uh, economic instability, um, where people weren't sure what was the outlook going to be for the pound. And then obviously the currency itself, like most currencies, um, got completely um, taken out by and, and sold off significantly um, through the COVID crisis into uh, March last year. Since then, though, there's been somewhat of a, a trend change. And that's where, when we talk about um, trends and market structure, what we mean is higher highs and higher lows. Okay, so anybody that has been following our channel for a little while will be aware of this. Anybody that's new, um, this may well be a new concept. So market, what we do is make it really clear to see. So these are higher highs. Um, and then lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower high, lower lows. And that's just simply because it's lower than the previous one before. So not rocket science, really easy to understand that it's turning points have been consistently making that lower shape. To make that even more clear um, and make it really easy to see, you can actually uh, turn off all of these candles um, for, the, for the chart by just hovering over this and seeing the eye figure there. So you can actually then see that is exactly the movements over the past kind of 12 months or so for the pound um, going into the, um, sorry, that over the 12 months going into the COVID crisis. And then since then, it's actually changed direction. So that's what we had before. Now, what we'll do, we'll use this um, to show exactly what's happened since then. And we'll then start to map out the reasons why we're looking at a potential now for the pound to be moving up higher. So if we look to turn those off again, you can now see how that process of lower lows, lower highs, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high than the previous low highs there. And again, the lower low has now been replaced by higher highs and higher lows. And that's happened here. And as you can see, started to march up higher across the chart now. And we've then started to make a potential another lower high. So what we can now see with this fundamental uh, news that could happen next week, obviously we're not trying to predict what will happen. Anything could happen in these um, economic meetings, but it certainly will have to happen at some point that monetary policy will tighten. Whether or not it'll happen at this meeting, the next meeting or the meeting after, who knows? but there's certainly potential for this to happen next week, or at least give the market some indication of it. And if that happens, then expect all of the pound denominated pairs that they will start to strengthen against their other currencies, okay? So this is um, something to look forward to and pay attention to for, um, for May itself. So what we'll do, we'll just remove those drawings, get the chart back to us. Um, and. What we've also then got to look at is potentially where could it move to? Generally, 
as we're seeing with the dollar, um, each currency generally has ranges that it that it moves between. So you can see that that's been somewhat of a range down here at 122, 120 region. Um, and then we've got another range in here where the market has been moving to previously. Another key level um, was very much around the 135 region. Um, I'll just call them very much, um, the, you know, the, the round figures there. You don't need to get too exact on exactly where they are. I'd say this is a, a 120 region, probably. I'd call this the 135 region. And this is the 140 region, just call them the round numbers. It makes it lots easier to understand. And realistically, it doesn't make too much difference by getting too precise because markets don't move to exact numbers. They move to zones and regions, really. OK, so if it does break this 140 region, we have to think of what's next. OK, and that's probably going to be up here. So um, then you'll start to see the market look to move to potentially this region up here, the 150 region, okay? So we'll start to then look at the market moving to that level. And as you can see, um, without it getting too distorted by that strange event there, um, you can see where this was a previous key level there, and that's what the markets will look to do. They'll move up to this level around about here. All right, if this level at 140 uh, can be broken, we'll move up to probably seeing this market here move up higher and that will mean all of the other um, forex pairs that use the pound will be hugely affected by that move as well so look out for that throughout may okay do we have any questions from anybody so far we do indeed we have a question from il um okay. and il says is there a head and shoulders pattern on the british pound currency index okay um I'm guessing what you're seeing on the head and shoulders pattern is this here. Correct me if you're wrong, if my eyes aren't seeing it the same as you. So you'd probably see something like this happening. That's the left shoulder. That's the, the head. And this is the shoulder. Is that what you're, um, is that what you're seeing there? Something like that. If that is the case, then yeah, you could certainly call it that. But realistically, um, one thing that we do look to try and stay away from in all of our analysis is any, um, you know, calling them certain names. It can be easier to understand in its personal preference. However, what we always look to stick to is price structure, which makes it really, really simple to understand. It doesn't matter about any patterns or chart patterns that are showing up. All that you need to really understand is higher highs and higher lows that will tell you what direction the market is generally moving in. And that will show you the trend of the market. And it will also show you um, positions where that trend has changed. And then that gives you an indication, okay, well, we're now in a new phase of the market. And, and by looking into those general um, price structures with the higher highs, higher lows, lower lows, lower highs, et cetera, et cetera, you'll actually see they do chart out and they do make these patterns that most people do identify. Um, they, they make those naturally, but you'll actually get a much quicker um, identification of this, uh, of this trend change by instead of waiting for the price to move up here before it's made that pattern complete and that, okay, now I know that it's a, a head and shoulders pattern, with the price structure, you'll have known that somewhere up here really, really early, and you'd have been able to make much, much more profit throughout that move. Hopefully that kind of explains our, our position on that for you a little bit there. Yeah, yeah, so that's right. Yeah, it will be a confidence if it moves up to the 150, then that's where you can see that the, um, that the, the chart will have been complete, as it were, the head and shoulders pattern would be complete. But what we're looking for is to try and identify these changes as soon as possible so we can profit from them. Okay, so we'll just remove those as well. All right, so we've got people joining all the time. Um, so welcome to everybody who has um, recently joined the, the call today and we'll be going through lots of different uh, things throughout tonight. So. Um, we've covered those um, and where we're looking to potentially go for the pound and the dollar. We'll have a look at a couple of more currencies before we move on. 
Just make sure anybody who is um, on the call has their microphone muted. It just makes it easier for everybody to um, hear and the audio quality much easier. So um, when we look at this, the EXY, this is the Euro currency index. Okay. Um, we're actually seeing that this generally um, is probably somewhat overbrought now, um, quite extreme levels um, where we could see the Euro falling quite significantly from this level. <laughs> If you look at on the weekly time frame here, um, and we really kind of zoom this out as far as it goes, the euro generally is quite a weak currency. In certain periods, it will strengthen. However, it will always look to, historically anyway, unless we're proven otherwise, it will generally look to move lower and has lots and lots of potential to move lower now with the region of where it's at at 120. Could really easily move much, much lower. If it does, that will have huge implications as well for financial markets, of course. Okay. Um, so with that being the case, you can really just see that from the uh, structure. And that's the reason why we're looking to over really long term positioning here. You can see where just drawing it out roughly for the market, really, really weak. Had some areas of um, consolidation along this zone here. Yeah, just... Um, Put that in there. So I had a, a period of consolidation and potentially, well, you know, certainly an intermediate bottom in the market there. And it's broken out of that. However, unless it takes out this high here and moves up past the 125 region, then realistically, the, the euro is going to struggle. Um, we've already seen that at the start of the year, it's really kind of sold off quite significantly once it made up these highs. And again, we could now see that this on the smaller time frame is looking to uh, move now in this same trend that we were talking about. OK, so when you look at it on the daily, you can see this really clearly higher to a lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. And it's only simply come up here now, potentially broken up that, that previous level there but it really does need to take out a lot of these resistances before that trend has changed and you can see again today huge euro selling has happened from yesterday significant fall from you know one point so 121.5 region that it was at previously it's now down near 120 so quite significant selling in just simply one day and if that gives you an indication as a month end and a weekend uh, monetary flow certainly could be an indication of where the um, euro could be heading next throughout May. Um, so what we're going to do before we look into any of the other uh, currency pairs, we're going to look into a little bit of the stock market. All right. So um, we've covered the majority of the major currencies um, that they're going to look to move. Um, but generally this analysis, what you can do is partner these currencies together in the Forex market to actually then get your trades to that you want to trade. So instead of potentially thinking, oh, I want the dollar to move, I'm thinking I've got a potential region that I can move on the dollar. Well, then you've got four or five different dollar markets that you could choose from. When we look on here, you could use USD JPY, USD um, Canadian dollar, you could use USD Swiss, you could use USD Euro, USD, you could use all of these different things, okay? But you need to know which one you're going to trade. So by knowing these currency indexes, by using them and identifying the, the individual currencies, you then partner them up. So if you then start to see, okay, well, the dollar we think may be moving higher, but the euro may be looking to move lower. Ah, okay. That gives me a trade that I should now be looking at the euro USD market. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody and gives you some frameworks that you can start using in your own trading. A different way of looking at the analysis to then pinpoint your trades about where you're looking to actually trade with the market. Okay. So that's the way that we look to do our analysis. Um, and certainly can be uh, something useful for, for other people as well. All right. 
So, um, anything to to add there, Alex? Yeah, I was well. I was just going to echo what you said. It was. I mean, it's a it's a really simple method of being able to target. Um, and as IL pointed out, um, and what we reiterate to Trading Club One Hundred One members, it's all about confluence. It's all about increasing the probability. Um, that things are going to move in the way that you anticipate based on the analysis that you're doing. And there's there's no better way than to break down the individual currency. So for in this example, um, we're seeing weakness in the euro. If you believe that the, the dollar is going to be strong like we've seen today, um, I mean, that would have been a, a fantastic trade for you simply based on the fact that you've broken down that currency. Um, and we, we, do, we do this regularly. We do this in terms of, for Trading Club 101 members, we do very much the higher highs, higher lows, and we keep it as simple as we can do. Um, and as Joel's going to talk to you shortly, um, we also have a, a simple way of looking through stock sectors and seeing in terms of them as individuals, where the strength is. Um, we've got a question from IL. Yep. How do you choose cross currency if not on major pairs? Well, that's exactly what we were looking to um, hopefully explain there is where what we were um, showing is that say it doesn't necessarily have to be on the major pairs. You could you could do this for, you know, take some significant time. We've taken over, you know, half an hour there looking at just a few pairs. But when you look throughout the whole market, you could be looking at the Aussie pairs. You could be looking at all of these different um, currency indexes. There are current currency indexes on trading view for all of these uh, currencies in the in the market. You can look at all of the majors and the um, the minor uh, currencies as well in the world. And as long as you just partner a strong one with a weak one, according to your analysis, then you're actually going to be on the right lines. That doesn't always have to be the major pairs. You could be partnering a major with a minor or two minors or two major pairs, whatever the case may be. You can partner them as your currency analysis is showing you. That will guide you into what market you should then be looking to trade, and it will give you a bias on what you should be looking to actually place. So when you when you break it down in that way, it gives you a really nice structure that you're looking to say, right, what are my price structures on the individual currencies? Where do I then think that I can partner this currency that I've got a strong idea where I think it's moving next? with another one where I think that that one's moving next. I've got a, one strong and one where I'm looking that it's going to sell off. I've got one where I think it's going up, one where I think it's going down. And then in that situation, you then choose that currency cross pair to trade. And the reality of it is that you only actually need to be right on one of them in order for you to make profit. Because even if say you're trading the Euro USD market, and let's say that you're only right about the dollar moving up and the euro doesn't really go anywhere, it just kind of stays where it is. Well, that will mean that euro USD moves in the direction that you want it to. If you're right on both of them, you make really, really good profits really, really quickly. If you're right on half of them, you'll still make really good profits. So it's a really easy way to, to structure your analysis. Okay, so hopefully that's uh, made the audio a little bit better. So we'll move on to the stock market, okay, um, and where some of you guys do trade it. Um, and we use a very similar way of and showing and making our analysis as we have done for the currencies. A really strong, easy, logical way that you should look to analyze the market. So what we look to is look at a wide net to begin with. And then we start to narrow down how you should be and what stocks to trade. So what we start off with is the stock sectors. Okay, we have a watch list there all about the stock sectors. And again, not everybody is aware that you can find these on TradingView. 
Um, you can find all of these stock sectors really easily on Google. If you type in all of the stock sector tickers, that's what they're called. You'll come up with all of this list here that I've got there for you. Um, and what this is, is all of the companies that are under the home construction market, okay? And we've got these for all of the different sectors within the market. So we've got the home builders, we've got banks, regional banks, um, retail market, uh, we've got the consumer discretionary market, oil services, metals, mining, all of them are through here, okay, that we look to, to analyze consistently. Um, now, what you can then look to do is once you've analyzed, okay, this entire market, this entire industry is moving in the one direction according to your analysis. Again, you know, we look to teach the higher highs, higher lows, and, you know, certain things that you should really look for to identify where there's going to be a higher low or a higher high low or a lower high, et cetera. So we can really pinpoint where these events will happen. This is what we look to try and teach through our premium analysis with the Trading Club 101 members. But once you really start to understand that process, then you can start to really narrow down where you should be looking to trade. So if you've got your analysis, for example, within the home construction market, okay, and you think that this market is now moving up significantly higher for one reason or another, it may well be to your analysis, then you can start to then know that, well, the stocks that I want to look at are all within this sector. So then you can move to all of the companies within this market as well. And then when you're looking at those individual companies, you'll then be able to start to see all of the different stocks in particular that you should look to actually trade, buy, invest in, whatever it is that you, that you look to do yourself. Um, and then with that narrowing down, so starting with a wide net, narrowing it down like a funnel, you'll end up with the best possible investment throughout the entire market that you could have found. And it's a really, really straightforward, logical process to follow. Again, this is what we do all day, every day for people. So we look to try and do all of this analysis for people as much as possible as well. All right. But for stocks in particular, it's a really good way of um, doing your analysis. Now, it takes quite a significant amount of time. We won't go through that live with you today, just simply due, you know, it could take us an hour, hour and a half to go through all of that. Um, you know, analysis with all of the different sectors and then finding the right companies. But it really does give you an indication of the way that you should look to do your analysis. Now, what we will do, though, is have a look at some of the major indices in the market. OK, um, so we'll look at the um, what are the currency what are the stock markets um, as an indices doing at the moment? Well, quite clearly um, to see that the S&P uh, is doing complete crazy numbers at the moment broken well above 4000 we're now moving with literally no hesitation whatsoever at this moment in time okay moving really really high throughout this market um broken the previous this is where we were at pre-covid era okay we were at 3300 we're now from that period nearly 25 percent higher than where we were pre-covid Make that of what you will and whether or not your analysis and your fundamental viewpoint is that the economy is 25% stronger than what it was pre-COVID. I'll leave that for your own analysis. Um, however, the one thing I will say is that this move may not well be funded by the economic situation under like gross domestic product unemployment all of these figures are much lower than where they were pre-covid okay what this move in the market is from is through liquidity so liquidity is what's driving the stock market at the moment so that's the signal that you should look to start looking for is any changes in central bank liquidity measures so this uh, economic tightening as we as we mentioned if you start to see that and start to see indications of that happening from central banks, that's going to have a huge effect on the equity market, on the stock market. OK, so that's what we should be looking to pay attention for. If throughout May that we start seeing uh, some of these uh, central banks in their meetings, 
look to try and take a a stronger tone to you know economic tightening etc and we do all of this analysis and share this within the um within the channel for you guys as well like we have today with the with the swiss central bank moves also the eurozone um economic figures that were announced uh, this morning so we look to release all of these for you and keep you up to date with exactly what's happening um, but pay attention to those because that will give you an indication once we start to see economic tightening happen, then that's where you'll start to see the equity figures and equity indexes move lower or not necessarily always lower, but they'll start to move sideways at least. It will stop this, um, stop the buying. But until then, while economic measures at the moment are defined as loose, where we've got low interest rates and low um lots and lots of economic support for businesses, you know, low interest loans, all of the rest of it, grants that go with it, payouts, all this, you know, economic support that's happened is kind of non-ending at the moment for businesses. And it's that amount of liquidity and easy money, low cost money uh, that has been driving this investment into the stock market. Okay. So um, that gives you an indication of what is driving this rise but also what you should be looking out for, for when that maybe will turn and when that maybe will look to start moving in the other direction. So I think that's a, I think that's a really great point about liquidity um, and something that we should all, all be aware of. Um, I was just looking to, before we moved on to any other indices, um, we've had a question from IL yeah. um, just saying, how do you set up the sectors list? Now, I'm not sure if that's into regards of, how do you make a watch list? Um, or as, as Joel alluded to about the ticker names for the actual sectors. Um, but that's something certainly we can briefly touch on. That's no problem at yeah, all. Yeah, so you can make a new watch list by um, just simply on trading. View. You go up to this um, watch list and details up here. Um, click on the drop down menu and it will say here, create a new list. Okay, you can then call that whatever you like. Okay. And that will be your new watch list. Then you'll add them in to here. Okay, so um, you can find all of the stock sectors, all of these um, that you want to type in. So ITB, for example, you know, so where's our stock test watch list? Find all of those by looking on Google. Um, really easy. Look on the internet um, and you're able to find all of um, these stock sectors, uh, you'll find all of these names and the ticker names through Google by just simply typing in stock sectors, tickers or stock, uh, stock sector ETFs as well. That's another way that you can find them. Um, and you'll find a whole list of them. It, it shouldn't take you too long, you know, 10, 15 minutes maximum. You'll put that list together and start making your watch list um, together there. And you'll able to then start to see how is the market moving. One way that I also use this is I'll look at it as a general overview of the percentage changes here. So then I'll start to see, okay, right. So the major market generally, the stock market has been quite red today. All right. However, there are periods of not necessarily strength because these aren't huge positive numbers, 0.47% up, but you know, we can see here that the utilities sector at least hasn't gone negative. It's moved somewhat sideways. Um, and then you can actually see through uh, this week what's happened. So if we look on the daily here, you can see where it's, it's threatened to go down, but it's actually moved up. And on the weekly here, generally finished the week where it started it, it moved down periodically but it's shown some strength and, and came back up so that gives you an indication that in this market in particular there are um some buying happening once that dip had happened and will then give you an indication that you can start looking closer into all of these companies really simple way that you can do that is just simply again google all of the companies in the u.s stock market that are in the utilities sector That'll give you a huge list. And then start looking through those and doing some analysis on those individual companies. Once you do that for, for a little bit, you'll then actually come up with some really good companies that you could possibly invest in and look to trade. And then you've narrowed down from a whole market of thousands of companies down to a few that you're interested in and actually looking to, to trade. 
works the other way as well. You know, for instance, just off the top here, one of the major areas here from what I can see um, is this um, oil and gas has uh, sold off quite a lot today. It's had quite a good week, um, moved up a little bit. And that's quite a strong market, um, generally the oil and gas sector. But you can see, um, whereas today it's actually sold off quite a bit. So you may think to yourself, OK, um, if I'm already invested into oil and gas companies, and this is the exploration and production um, companies specifically, not necessarily um, all of uh, the oil and gas companies. But um, if I'm already invested in these, I may look to try and take some, some profits maybe, or I maybe if I'm looking to trade both buy and sell, looking to short some of these companies, if I start to see that from that industry, I can see some in particular, maybe, maybe out of 10 companies that I find in this stock sector, eight of them have already sold off quite a lot, but two of them haven't really moved. Well, maybe there might be a situation there where those two are lagging behind slightly and there might be an opportunity to sell those where they're going to catch up generally with the rest of the industry. So these are the types of things that you can do in your analysis to get a really good um, like head, head start on most of the market. So you can be in these trades and start to see the best possible trades in the market really, really quickly. All right. So these are little tips, little kind of guides that we that we look to try and give you so that you can try and find your way through these markets because it is a difficult skill to master and there's a huge amount that goes into trading. But these are the types of ways to think, the, the processes to put in place to give yourself half a chance to being right in this market, okay? So we'll move on to the, the crypto market because it's always an interesting market, of course. Um, so... Lots and lots of people are invested into the crypto market. I'm sure many of us here on this call today are. We certainly are ourselves. Um, and we have lots of different holdings in the crypto market. But we, again, just want to, in this call, give you a bit of a guide about how to approach this market. Because there really are hundreds, if not thousands, of different coins that you could possibly trade in any one day any one of these coins could be moving it well in some cases hundreds of percent some of them obviously the major ones maybe not so much but certainly minor altcoins there's you know thousands to be won and lost also as well so um really exciting market to be involved in really still early early doors for the crypto market as a general market cap for the um for the crypto market, we're still really, really early. So even though it may seem that you're a little bit late, if you haven't already invested in this, you may think, am I too late to be invested into crypto? Well, our advice certainly is definitely not. I think that you're still well ahead of, you know, 90% of the general public if you're, or if you're investing into crypto market at this point. So even though you're not the first people to be invested and in, you'll make your millions off you know, minor investments, you'll still be ahead of the major wave of money that will be moving into the crypto market generally, okay? So that's our general overview on where we see uh, the market. And it's, you know, also one of the most frequently asked questions that we get is, are we too late to be investing into this one coin or even just the crypto market in general? Is it too late to get started now? And always the case, definitely not. So uh, I see we've got a, um, a question coming in there. What do we think about XRP? Really good question, uh, Damien. So let's have a look at XRP itself. Huge push up today, 13%. Um, so we were looking at, and we on the free channel late last year, in fact, gave a signal out on, um, on this uh, trading group 101 on the free channel. We gave out a, uh, a signal around 20, uh, 20 cents, I think it was 22, 23 cents that we actually gave out a signal to buy this. And it was just really um, at the start of the SEC case with XRP. For anybody that isn't aware or up to date with uh, what's happening and why XRP in particular is in such a different mode, um, is that XRP it currently, or Ripple, the company who created XRP, are in a court case with the Security and Exchanges Commission in uh, the US. And at the moment, you can't buy XRP on most US exchanges, only on 
um, exchanges outside of the US because um, a certain court case going on, I won't get into complexities of it, but um, that is why at the moment it's such a controversial investment. Um, so I see there's a, <clears throat> a few more questions coming in. Yeah, lawsuit, right, okay. So um, yeah, it's, I'll be honest with you, Damien, I'm not gonna predict the outcome of a lawsuit. You know, I'm not qualified to do that. And quite frankly, it doesn't matter even if you are, it's impossible to know which way a court case will move, right? But our positioning on XRP was back um, late last year. Um, we were looking into the market around about 20, uh, 20 cents, 23 cents that we actually gave that signal out. And what we said is that hold your XRP on the basis of that it really could go anywhere on the basis of that if this lawsuit comes out as a positive for, for Ripple and for XRP, and that they are um, given the all clear, as it were, and the SEC lose their court case against XRP, then that is a huge endorsement for them and gives them a huge validation. And it will mean that huge relistings on um, major exchanges like Coinbase, and all of the other American exchanges then were able to buy XRP again. And almost this is why lots of these court cases, and they will happen for other uh, cryptocurrencies in the future as well. XRP isn't the first and it won't be the last that get approached by um, court cases and all sorts of regulation that will come to this market, but it should be welcome generally. The reason why is that if it passes that test, then that's where the crypto market will go into huge, huge profits from here. That's why I say we're still really early because the majority of these coins haven't really, and cryptocurrencies haven't really had much regulation or, or attempted regulation, they haven't passed that test yet. Um, much of the gains will come after they've passed that test. During that time, there will be some um volatility but i think the the risk to rewards are certainly weighted to the reward side of things i think that um one way or the other whether or not it's xrp it could well be another coin but once they pass these regulation tests and win these court cases then you could see xrp going much much higher than where it is at the minute would i buy xrp at 1.58 Probably not, I'll be honest with you, because I think that at that stage, there are risks both equally down to the downside and to the upside. So our positioning was that we kind of held all of our XRP once the court case happened, held it, kind of, you know, sit on it, wait and see the outcome of it, um, opposed to looking to sell back then when lots of other people were looking to sell. It's important to hold your XRP at that point and then just await the outcome of this. Um, I probably wouldn't be getting invested in the middle of it because there will be huge upswings, huge downswings. If maybe it pushes all the way back down to somewhere near 20 cents, then potentially you could look to get invested again at that stage where it gets really, really sold off and, and really, really uh, negative press will do that. Um, but I think there's at the minute, probably too much downside as much as there is upside. It's too much of a risk one way or the other. Okay. Hopefully that answers the question for you, Damien. Yeah, I just would like to add that I think, I agree, I think that's the sensible thing to do. Um, I would also like to say that we, in terms of how we um, use cryptocurrency or trade cryptocurrency, um, our outlook has always been into invest um, in, it, in its long-term future and small movements on a daily basis such as now um, it's, it's not something that we um, are too worried about um, like with a lot of our trades in cryptocurrency um, we invested um, a short while back and we envisage holding for a long, a long period of time um, and by remaining in the market um, we feel that that's how we will we will come out as best as we can. So um, yeah, that that's my two pence on um, on XRP. 
really um, really good point there alex because um something that should definitely be mentioned when you are trading cryptocurrencies is to look at them as a like a stock investment as a portfolio you look to just buy them without any leverage i don't look to try and trade them at, like you would forex for example on cfd accounts and leverage accounts you want to buy them with zero leverage um, just buy them for the coins that they are. Don't simply look to, to get any leverage involved because let's say um, the, the reason why is because there's huge volatility, okay? So if, say you're buying on 20 times leverage. That's really, really small when it comes to some people trade on like 100 times leverage and all sorts of things like that, okay? But let's just say on 20 times leverage, a really small amount. Then if say you have a... So that what 20 leverage means that your times your leverage, your, your any percentage moves both in the upside and downside are times by your leverage amount. OK, and that is how people blow their accounts, because even a very small percentage move when times by 20 leverage that you're trading with will wipe your account out. Now, in crypto terms, you can see here today that the good news is that if you are trading on leverage today, you'd have made huge profits. You'd have XRP 13% up. So you'd have made crazy profits if you were trading that today and you're holding it all day. You know, Bitcoin Cash, exactly the same. But in equal parts, we've all seen over the past few days that these can move the other way just as much. And in those situations, that's where people blow their accounts and they're left with nothing at the end of a really, really good investment. They could have been buying a, a really, really good cryptocurrency but they've lost their account because they've traded it on leverage instead of an investment. Whereas if you've got it as an investment and you own the coins, you're happy to hold them. If it moves 20% down, won't worry you too much because your time horizon, or at least with ourselves, is much, much higher than that. So, um, you know, if we're looking at years down the line, a 20% move in one day actually just simply maybe gives you a buying opportunity. You can simply then look to buy at a discount, improve your average entry, instead of looking to get stopped out, account closed and all the rest of it, and you've lost huge money. You're actually looking at these, this volatility as a bonus, as an, as an upside then, opposed to a negative. So that's really, really good point to raise, Alex, and um, certainly something to take on board if you are looking to invest in this market as well and look to trade cryptos yourselves. We have another question from IL okay. um, in regards to cryptocurrencies. Which do we recommend um, any brokers um, to use? Okay, yeah. So um, we aren't affiliated with any brokers. You'll find lots and lots of trading channels are. We're not affiliated to any brokers. Um, so we don't kind of formally recommend any, but we only tell you what we use. So um, there are a couple of different options. Um, uh, generally, when you're looking to buy your crypto, stick to probably Coinbase or Binance, two biggest exchanges, and um, you're able to find the majority, if not all, coins that you want to buy on those exchanges. Um, and really, really safe, really easy to use. That's just from our perspective, our own personal opinion. Um, and when you look to store and hold your cryptos, so you can either do it on those exchanges, they'll hold and you can store them on there um, in, in the cloud, as it were, you know, store them online. Um, but the only downside to that is potentially there is some sort of third party risk, you know, if for any reason these companies were to go bust or anything crazy happened in the, um, in the crypto world, you know, these funds could get held, at least you're not in control of them directly. If that is a concern of you, then you can simply buy something called a nano ledger device. Well, it's actually called a ledger device. The, the product's called a nano ledger. That's probably the most popular one. And you can hold them yourselves. Um, so it's a bit like having a, your own wallet, like you'll store your bank cards in and things like that and all of your cash in. You can actually hold them offline um, yourself in a, in a ledger device. Um, and that's just like your normal bank account. If you ever want to access your coins, you'll, you'll log on and there's, you know, all sorts of normal security that everybody is used to with their own bank accounts to log in and access your, uh, your coins. Um, that's probably the safest way to hold your coins. Um, and probably the best way to buy them is through Coinbase or Binance. That's our own personal opinion. 
We don't formally recommend that you do either of those. By all means, do your own research and look into online, um, you know, the best broker um, and best for your own personal situation. But for us, that's those options work really well. So hopefully that's uh, giving you some, some pointers or at least some ways that you can look to um, some starting points to do some research and, and look what might be useful for yourself. It might well be that you look to, you know, do the same as us. Maybe after doing that research, you find for one reason or another, it's not quite right for your circumstances. That's fine. The, there are a whole different host of different options out there. As soon as you do a little bit of research into it, you'll, you'll know which one works best for you probably. So um, what we're going to do um, is we've looked into the cryptocurrency market a little bit there, um, but one thing I do want to bring your attention to, um, and if you haven't already um, done it, this is on TradingView. Lots of you I know who have messaged me already have found us through TradingView, um, through some of the different uh, videos that we do. Um, but what, one thing for the crypto market in particular that you should look to watch is um, this one here. Okay. Um, use this chart to predict the altcoin season in crypto market. Um, we were actually selected, this video was selected to be on the homepage of TradingView. Um, so really um, privileged on that point of view. Um, and lots and lots of... Um, I don't know how many of you guys today who found us through this video, potentially some of you did. Um, but if you haven't already watched this, because it gives you a really good breakdown of how and when and what types of cryptocurrencies you should be investing in at which points in the market. OK, and it's really just a, a breakdown of what this BTC.D chart is. I say you can Bitcoin dominance chart is called this one here on trading you. It gives you an indication of what this chart means. It's really important. It's probably the most important chart on cryptocurrencies because it will tell you whether or not you should be investing in smaller coins or whether or not you should be investing in larger cap coins like Bitcoin, Ethereum, the large cap coins, almost viewed as like the safer bets in the market. Or potentially, you know, if the market, you should be looking at some of the riskier options. So that video... It's somewhere near, only quite short there, um, you know, seven minutes long. Well worth having a watch if you're interested in the crypto market or if you're already trading the crypto market and you haven't seen it before. Have a watch because it's going to give you some really good indications of how and why and how to use that chart. Um, and anybody that is brand new to um, cryptocurrencies um, and certainly knows about them, knows what they are to some degree, but, you know, not a huge amount one way or the other. Then we also have this as well. What is Bitcoin? And it's a fundamental explanation of what is Bitcoin and why does it have value? Really, really important. If you understand Bitcoin, you'll understand lots of other areas of cryptocurrencies as well. So if you're brand new to the market and you want to get involved, probably this is a really good starting point because it will give you some background and um, worldview of where do cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin in particular sit within that worldview of all of the different other markets like stocks and currencies and all that it'll show you where cryptocurrencies sit within that okay so um does anybody else have any kind of questions um through these um for anything that we've mentioned so far if you have get them into the chat group um and i'll i'll answer those um with you in a moment um now if you've enjoyed the the, the call tonight um certainly we love doing these with all of um, you guys as well um love answering questions and you know sharing our knowledge with you it's what we do um all day every day um for our premium members some of you guys um will have already seen or heard of potentially um us talk about trading club 101 because there's really two sides to what we offer. So we offer the Trading Group 101 that um, everybody here is a part of, and that is uh, where we do all of our um, videos, our free to access videos. Um, we'll share those with you, obviously answer any questions that you have. Um, by all means, always welcome to message myself or Alex at any time and give you loads of um, advice also on um, the 
general economic view of the market and major updates like we've seen today there's been some updates um that we've shared this morning about some changes in the um central bank policies and things like that so um really really useful to give you some guide of where you're looking to move in the market but then we also have a premium service it's called trading club 101 okay um, so what we do for our premium members is go one step further and all of this analysis that we have shown you today, we do this on your behalf, where what we look to do is um, we'll go through all of these day in, day out, it's what me and Alex do all of the time, is look at these financial markets, looking for trades ourselves, and then whenever we've done our analysis and got to a point where we want to invest in something, we actually send a signal out to our premium men members and we do that through our premium um, telegram channel. So you get a live update on your phone of saying where we have invested, gives you a good indication if you're quite new to trading or just want um, you know, uh, some advice and, and easy to access um, trades that you can copy, by all means, you're more than welcome to do that. And also of course have 24 seven access to ask us any question about trading. Um, and about any of the analysis that we do as well. Um, you then also get access to all of our premium videos as well. You'll see here where we're analyzing losses, for instance, for example, in EURUSD. And these are all of our, you'll get the links and access to all of these um, analysis on Aura Cannabis stock here. Um, we do the cryptocurrency coins, OMG coin, ENG coin, all of these different um, member-only videos that we do. Um, you get access to all of those. So, you, um, you know, access to at least everything on TradingView that you may have seen already. All of that, again, that you'll get access to. Um, and then also, of course, we do a weekly macro newsletter where we give an article about what, um, what you should be trading, um, a general overview, some hints and tips about trading, some lessons that we include in there and also as well some um, individual stocks that we pick out every single week. We go in depth on one particular stock that's our favorite for that week. Some of those um, signals that we've done, our stock selections have been really successful in, in that newsletter. So um, really, really good. And then uh, of course as well, we do this video that we've done with you tonight. We do this every single week for, pre um, for premium members. So every Sunday uh, at 8 p.m., we uh, go through these charts live with everybody, answer questions and get to um, chat and get to know everybody on a more personal level as well throughout the weeks. Um, and then um, it gives you an indication of some of the different options that we've got for signing up. Now, really, really um, great is that we've got a 30 day free trial at the moment for anybody that does join Trading Club 101. So that means you get access to all of these premium benefits. 30 days as a trial once you join and um if for any reason <laughs> very rare but if for any reason you don't think it's right for you for one reason or another then there's no obligation um and you don't have to pay anything until after you've been a member for 30 days so um something that we always do get asked about wanted to share that with you um and if anybody has enjoyed tonight's call we're able to uh, benefit from that as well so um other than that um, hopefully, I haven't seen any other questions come through. Um, Alex, what about um, yourself? Do you have anything else to, to add? Yeah, no, I just want to say thank you all for joining. Um, had some really great comments. We've got one from IL saying just excellent, very educational session. Um, I never knew any of the aspects that you covered today, so thank you. Brilliant. Um, we'd like to say thank you for, for joining us. Um, I've given you the link to our trading view page. Um, feel free to have a look at any of the content on there um, obviously you're a part of the trading group 101 anyway so thank you for supporting us um, thank you for continuing to join these calls and um, we are going to run one of these on the last day of every month yeah. um, so if you if you did want to get a part of the trading club 101 free trial um, there'll be plenty of content going on throughout the month of May um, and as I said we'll be doing this call um, at the end of the month anyway um, but likewise this is something that we run very similarly um, but more more specifically to the week ahead every single Sunday um, at eight o'clock so thank you for joining us um, really informative as always um, and thank you thank you again and we hope to speak to you soon
Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, so thanks to everybody for, for listening and um, enjoy the rest of your evening and your weekend. All the best. Thank you.